In this video, I'm going to mainly focus on the common errors that happens in the OSCE skill nasopharyngeal suctioning. One of the challenges nurses face is suction machine itself. It might be a wall suction or small mobile suction you might be given and you might not know how to operate that. So let's look at the common errors that can come across. Firstly, I'm going to show you the equipment and the suction machine itself so you can learn and understand what are the common things can go wrong there. So let's come close. So here is a suction machine. This is a mobile suction machine. Please note, sometimes the switch on button might be there for some of the machines if it's tinier. So in this particular suction machine, the switch on is there. Just turn the dial. So based on the pressure you want. So this is the pressure on millimeter of mercury. So you can have kilopascal as well. Common pressure that is required for suction is 100 to 150. I have kept here now on 120. All right, pressure that is required to do the nasopharyngeal suctioning for adults. All right, and you connect the suction tubing here and then goes to nasal suctioning tube. All right, so suction tube and then goes to suction catheter uh, normally connect here. If you have wall suction, similar method you have for the wall suction, you can have a dial and you have a canister where you can empty the fluid after and then uh, you have a connecting tube. Please go through the suction machine before you start so you know how to operate this. I'm going to switch this off. Okay, very simple to use it. So I would advise for you to have a go before you uh, start your station. So other common items you have here is the suction tube. So that's the suction tube which connects to the suction um, machine. So you can see these are the two ends open ends so one connects to the suction machine one connects to the catheter so you have a suction catheter here so this is a valved suction catheter where you can put a finger in there that goes to the suction tube this goes to the nose now the most important thing here is reading the size let me show you the size here all right so you can see here is clearly written 12 fg french gauge so it can be 14 it can be 15 or it can be 8 the normal adult size is recommended is 10 to 12. this is 12 keep an eye on that do not choose the wrong size if you choose the wrong size so that can uh, be an error so make sure you choose the right size okay and the expiry date is there as well so that's the suction catheter and then uh, you have uh, to have the mask because when you're doing suctioning so you can get the droplet sprays so that's why you must wear the uh, mask and you have to wear the goggle as well, which is recommended for you to wear the goggle. You need gloves and apron. Now, common errors, one people are worried or having challenges is switching on the machine and number two, doing the actual suctioning. Now I'm going to walk you through the common errors which can happen in this station. So there are certain steps I am not going to cover but I'm going to mainly focus on the common errors that can be helpful for you to pass the Eroski. Now that you have got all the items ready, I've got all the items ready, I came to the patient. First thing I'm going to do is perform hand hygiene. So very important, this is one of the errors people uh, do. They forget to hand hygiene when they arrive to patient. And then uh, uh, you're going to introduce the patient. Hello there, um, John. Hello. John, I'm Gilbert, one of the nurses here. I am going to do nasopharyngeal suctioning for you. Is that okay? Yeah. Are you comfortable? Yeah. All right, John, I'm just going to wear my gloves and then I'm going to go through things with you, okay? Okay. Or right, I'm going to wear the gloves.
Now, important thing here is forgetting to provide a comfortable position. John, I'm going to put you a comfortable position. Is that okay? Yep. It can be supine position or it can be a semi-upright position which patient can be comfortable. Now, John, what I want you to do is I want you to agree a stop sign. You might need to agree a stop sign with the patient if the patient is uncomfortable. The other common error can happen is people are forgetting to check the clinical observations. You must need to verbalize that. Okay, John, I am going to check your vital signs, including respiratory rate, heart rate, saturation. Before I start the procedure, this is a baseline observation I must obtain before I start. Okay, John, is it okay for me to proceed? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to wear the goggles. I have already got the mask in here. So I'm going to wear the goggles. And then now I'm going to proceed to do the procedure. So mostly you can see here is the tubing. All right, so most important. And the second one, you have the suction catheter, which I'm going to go through uh, for you. So I'm going to take the suction tubing out. You can take the packaging there. You are allowed to touch the tubing. Make sure these ends are kept aseptic, non-touch. So I'm going to connect this. You can touch this with the gloves, which is nothing wrong. Okay, so keep it as clean as possible. So I'm going to make sure this can be left down, which is fine. So this is the one where to switch on. Before switching on, I'm not going to switch on yet. I am going to open one end of the uh, catheter. All right, that's what you use for suction. I'm going to connect this end. And the other end, you can either peel it or I'm going to take the whole catheter out gently without touching anywhere. So making sure it's not touching anywhere, guys. You can touch with the gloved hand this one. This is a common error people do thinking, can I touch with the gloved hand? Can I not touch with the gloved hand? You can keep an eye on the marking criteria of OSCE as well. So you are allowed to touch the gloved hand here with the gloved hand can touch the catheter. Now I'm going to hold it like this. Okay, I'm going to use the right hand to take it to the nose of the patient. I'm going to switch on the suction machine. Assessor, I'm going to keep the suction at 120, be between 100 to 150 millimeter of mercury. Mine is on 120. Now, once you switch on, so I shouldn't put the finger on the valve at, but you can test it. See the sound change? All right, what I'm going to do is, I am going to lubricate the tube with the, the sterile water. But if you can test it, at the same time, test it whether it's working. Yes, it is working. So now I'm going to go and do the suction. When I'm doing suction, this common is patency. You need to ask the patient to do a sniff test. Now, John, can I ask you to do the sniff test for me? So close one nose and blow it uh, and breathe on through the other nose. And can we test it? So. Now let's say the right nose is patent, so I am going to use that, or patient is saying left nose is patent, I'm going to use the left nose. Now I'm going to use the left nose in this situation. So most important, I've lubricated the tube, I'm going to insert the tube all the way until I feel the resistance or patient start coughing. I'm going to withdraw the tube then I'm going to apply suction. Commonly what people do is, common error here, they keep the finger on and then they insert. That means suction is already applied. You might suck the mucosa before you're going in. You can injure the mucosal uh, lining of the nose. So you go straight in without keeping the finger on. When you feel the resistance or patient starts coughing, you withdraw one centimeter and I'm going to apply continuous suction as I am withdrawing the tube. Now I am going to rinse or flush the tube and assess I'm going to repeat this procedure two more times if required. 
Now then you can switch off the machine, disconnect the tube and discard that into the yellow bin and you can take the tubing off as well and discard that into the yellow bin and then uh, discard everything into the clinical waste bin what you had and most important make sure patient is comfortable if any excessive secretion is there on the nose make sure you clean that and then uh, I am going to clean the tray and leave it for next use or you can take the gloves and apron off first and then verbalize about cleaning the tray. So I'm going to take the apron off here. Another common error can happen in here is not removing the mask, not removing the goggle. So don't forget before you end the procedure, make sure you remove the mask without touching the front part of the mask. Discard that. And if you're reusing the goggles, you might need to clean it properly unless it's a disposable goggle. So you can dispose these goggles. So I'm going to put that on the side and make sure you do a final hand hygiene. And leave the call bell to the patient and do the final documentation about the procedure and then you can leave.